we're going to do a little song. Um, I, I think about all of you should remember this little song. Why would you stand for this? And then we have another song that we're going to join in, and it, it's, it's what I call the one-word lyric song. All right, you, you'll pick up on that later. <laughs> talking about and if you miss that moment you really miss the point of the movie or the episode this really is the pivotal moment of Jesus's ministry and it's a moment that we struggle to understand because we can't make sense of it there's clouds and angels and people that were dead that suddenly reappear and it really doesn't make sense to us and we struggle to actually comprehend this pivotal episode in Jesus' ministry. In fact, when we read the Synoptic Gospels and we read John's Gospel, they don't help us very much because they actually handle the transfiguration in a different way. Some place it at different points in the story of Jesus' ministry. But here we have this pivotal moment of transfiguration and it comes in Matthew's gospel at a dramatic time soon after Peter has confessed that Jesus is Lord. We are given this description 
of this transformed appearance. And suddenly we no longer just see Jesus, but we have two other people in the picture, Moses and Elijah. And for years we have been struggling with our response to transfiguration. If you haven't bought your Shrove Tuesday tickets, deal with Sarah. We are right at the brink of our Lenten journey. And it starts when we celebrate Shrove Tuesday, when we come and we eat together in celebration of of the bounty of God's presence. And then we come on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, to receive ashes because we enter into another rhythm and another season. And so coming into this period of Lent, we have transfiguration, which allows us to really interpret what does it mean to come into a transformed presence of God before we even enter into the period of Lent. This transfiguration, this moment where everything changes, where Jesus enters a cloud with his disciples and an entire transformation happens. You see, we are a people of metamorphosis. We are constantly changed. But when we, when we encounter this, this transfiguration of Jesus, we cannot deny the discomfort of his disciples. I mean, Peter does a number of things. At one moment, they are very, very, very afraid because they, they don't know what's happening. At another moment, their recognition of Moses and of Elijah would have really taken them into their deepest Jewish heritage and faith, where they would have remembered that Moses is the symbol of the law and Elijah is the symbol of the prophets. So they know that Jesus is the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And yet in that place that they are afraid, that their entire culture, that their entire religion comes to a moment of complete transformation. You see, as we come into the mountain of transfiguration, we are reminded that part of our Christian journey and faith is for us to keep seeking the mountains of transfiguration. Now, we do that in many different ways as Christians. Some of us during Lent are going to give up something. And I want to suggest that if whatever you give up doesn't draw you closer into a transformed relationship with Jesus, please don't give it up. If you think that giving up chocolate is going to make you a better person, or in fact a better Christian, then come with the evidence at the end of 40 days. If it is going to make you more crabby and miserable, maybe you've missed the point of Lent. I've always wondered why during Lent, the chocolate manufacturers make the best kind of chocolate. I mean, in South Africa, you don't get Reese's. That's like an American thing. And I've never seen Reese's Easter eggs. I was like mesmerized by the Reese's. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it correctly. But you see, we have turned every single conceivable thing in Scripture into some type of religious order that we miss the point. We really miss the point. Here we have Jesus very seriously actually inviting his disciples into an incredible journey of transformation. Now, I've seen enough on social media about what's happening in Asbury at the moment. Anybody seen a post on what's happening in Asbury? There are many people that are writing about this revival, this outpouring, this moment, this time in history. And there are some people that are critiquing it. And there are some people that are writing a whole thesis on the critique of it. But essentially, what is happening at Asbury at the moment is a Christian move of God in Wilmore, Kentucky. It was an event that was... Now, you know when something has hit the newspaper, then when Wikipedia gives you a definition. So I thought the best definition of what's going on in Asbury would be Wikipedia at the moment. Because, I mean, what, what would they know other than, you know, what they're going to report? So Wikipedia are telling us that really it is a move of... of of God. It is a move of the Spirit. And whatever it means, whether it is revival or not, you see, revival is not tested by what happens in the moment. It is the fruit of what happens after the moment. 
You know, we, when the move of God happens, the fruit comes later. I, I've noticed these trees with these beautiful flowers, and I realize now that those are mango trees and making me sneeze every five minutes. But the fact remains is we see the fruit, but we don't see the flower. We see the flower, but we don't see the fruit. The fruit will come. And so that's really what transfiguration is about. You and I are invited, before we enter the season of Lent, to enter a place of transformation, to look for your mountain, where God will do a work in your lives. I've taken a trip to Israel and had the opportunity of climbing that mountain where this transfiguration of Jesus took place. It was probably one of the scariest moments ever. Because in case you've ever climbed a mountain, it is really not a simple process. It's not an up and down. You go around and you go around and you go around. And it takes an incredible intentionality to get on top of the mountain. And so there is a sense that we are invited to a place that draws us away from the rhythms of life. And that's why I like the period of Lent, because it is really about a period where we change the cadence of our lives. And if the changing the cadence of your life means you give up chocolate, yes, then give up chocolate. If changing the cadence of your life means that you wake up an hour earlier to pray, then wake up an hour earlier. It's changing the cadence because ultimately we are seeking a place where God transforms us. So what does it mean when Jesus ministers transformation? As good Methodists, we often speak about how Scripture is an authority and how important it is for us to reason with each other. And as Methodists, we hold firm that we have very important traditions that we must uphold. But we also, as Methodists, speak about our experiences. And if you haven't experienced a transformation by the power of the living God, maybe now is your time. Because ultimately, we cannot ignore that our Christian faith requires and involves experiences of transformation. I'm currently reading... Um, Paula D'Arcy and her life's journey. And she was 27 years old. She was three months pregnant. She was driving in a car with her husband and her little daughter. And her husband and her daughter were killed during a motor car accident. She survived the accident. And she had a child seven months later. And I've been reading her memoirs, listening to her journey with God. And, it, and, and she gets to a point where seven years after the birth of her, her new baby, Beth, she kind of gets to the point where she pours herself out in her unpacking how God was present in the mourning and the loss of her daughter, Sarah. But then she gets to a moment where she finds that her world falls apart again. And she desperately seeks the presence of God. And so God begins to do a work of transformation in her soul. And there is one thing that she said that sticks with me this, this morning. She said that she wrote in her diary, Why do we keep hiding as adults? Something about our adult journey of faith that requires us to be like children. I feel as if we need to mic up what's going on here on a Sunday. Because when the children are here, you don't get to hear everything that they say. And let me tell you something. Last week was priceless, even this week. I mean, I, I still think that we're still getting over what happened to Kerry last week. Um, but the reality is there is a truth in the expression of children because they seek the truth. There is something about the disciples of Jesus that come and they're ready to experience something completely different. And so my invitation to you in the spiritual metamorphosis on the brink of our Lenten period, where are you going to seek God on the mountain. 
Now, sometimes the mountain is literally, figuratively a mountain that you physically journey to. Or maybe the mountain is a place that you go to spiritually. Or maybe the mountain is a quiet place in your own home. But maybe the mountain is to actually bring yourself into a place of worship. When I've been reading about the Asbury moment of the outpouring of God, it began... After they closed the service, the formalities of worship were closed. And somehow, a group of students decided to go back. And they went back, and they started confessing, and they started pouring themselves out together. And suddenly, a move of God began to happen. And then days and days and days later, a move of God is happening. And I'm not here to critique it, but I am definitely here to say that I remember moments on the mountaintop. And if you cannot remember moments on the mountaintop, maybe this is the season where you seek the mountaintop. If we cannot remember moments on the mountaintop as a church, then together we need to seek the mountaintop. Because not only do we have scripture and reason and tradition, but we have our experience. And transfiguration is about the metamorphosis of God. So it is my prayer at the beginning of Lent that no matter what you choose to do in Lent, whether it is a time where you will add on new practices, whether it is a time whether you will deny that you will somehow discover a metamorphosis in Christ. The one thing that is clear in all of the gospel accounts is that the disciples were afraid. They were afraid to allow the metamorphosis to take place. You see, somehow this transfiguration story shows us that we cannot control the outcomes. I mean, seriously? Clouds? Dead people, spirits coming and changing everything? And does that make sense to our scientific brains? No, it doesn't. But maybe part of the gift of transfiguration is to enter with a different type of brain. One that doesn't have to understand everything and balance everything, but one that is prepared to trust the move of God's Spirit. We have this gift of 40 days upon us. A gift that will allow us to not hide, but to journey with God. A time where we get to celebrate and a time where we get to call God to transform our lives. Let us pray together. Lord Jesus, you gathered your disciples at a moment where life was really confusing. They were beginning to understand the sacrifice that you would make. In the midst of their challenges, you removed them for a moment from everything that can be controlled and understood and you showed them another way. Lord God, we pray for ourselves at this time. We pray for our church. Our church that seeks to be the presence of light to the world, but is dimmed by all kinds of challenges, divisions, despair, irrelevance. We pray, God, that there would be a move of your spirit in our community that transforms us. We pray, Lord God, for every single life of our community 
that longs for a fresh anointing of your spirit. Strip away the things that stop us from being changed in your presence. Help us to stop hiding from who you are. Let your light shine through us. May this Lenten journey, God, be a time of our real transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.